it was kind of eye opening just once we we started the program. Um, we we kind of started. You're surrounded by all these different people that you can start asking the questions, and then you start hearing about all these different financing options or different ways that other people did it, and it just like opened up a door of opportunities that we didn't ever think about. Hi, I'm Wyatt, and I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Vodacy Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and I am excited to be having you join us today. One of my favorite types of episodes you guys always know is talking to short-term rental investors. They're willing to share their experience and their story diving into this game. And today, we've got Daniel and Amy Hansen joining us. They're part of our Vodacy Mentorship Group. And they're going to talk to us about their venture into their first short-term rental ownership over the last uh, seven or eight months now, guys. So thanks for joining us and sharing your story with us. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome. For awesome. Well, I always like to start off and just like, I, I like to say, hey, okay, where are you at? Where are you from? What do you do? And kind of what got you interested at all into the short-term rental game in the first place? Uh, well, I am Dan and Amy, and we uh, are in... Uh, Overland Park, Kansas. So uh, most people think of Kansas, they think it's flat, boring. Uh, we live here, uh, we call it home, but um, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Um, so, what, what, that, yeah, oh, tell us what you guys do there. So I'm a um, child and family therapist. So I do mental health therapy. And I'm a landscape designer. And so we, we are both self-employed running our own businesses. So just kind of sole proprietor LLC since about 2018, we've been kind of doing our own thing. Nice. Um, oh, is and, Kansas always home? Has that always been home? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, yeah. So, what, tell me what's exciting in Overland Park. I've actually been to Overland Park and everybody, you're right, Dan. Everybody thinks like, okay, there's nothing to do in Kansas. Overland Park is actually a really nice area. Well, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's a lot like most places, but I mean, uh, it's a basically right by Kansas City. So it's just Kansas City just expanded out. So there's the Chiefs here, the Royals. Yeah. There's the Sporting KC. We got all the sporting ven venues. Um, KU uh, basketball, that's where she went to school. And K-State's here. So it's a big just metropolis of a lot of people coming. It's just coming very family-oriented, you know, place. So, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's not exciting. That's for sure. As far as I don't know, all those things you said, they're pretty exciting. You got some pretty good teams, teams uh, going right there. I mean, we got, we got the Super Bowl champs. We got yeah. you know, but when, when the NCAA like, tournament time runs around, we got some good teams in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, sure. but definitely when you, when you talk about the vacation rental, uh, that no, was, yeah, okay. That, we're like, not a lot of people are, you know, vacationing in Kansas. So yeah. So where did we, uh, any, before we dive into the vacation rail side, do you guys have any experience in real estate investing? Was this kind of the, the jump into it or tell us a little bit about the real estate experience side of it? So I've always had some friends uh, that have been investing in the long term, And so that's always kind of what I've known. And whenever I talked to them, it just didn't quite seem like it was the right fit. And, uh, you know, when I, we were looking at stuff and then uh, basically when we came across your podcast and you talked about how like you create this, this place that you want to call your own and treat it like your own. I was like, man, that's, that's it. Because if I want to build something in a, in another place, I want to put the nicest stuff I can in there to make it like it is mine. And I want to take it uh, and make it unique. Yeah. And uh, so that's what really kind of resonated with us is when, we came across that. I was like, man, that is it. That's the key that I feel connects with me so that I can, I don't have to just put a uh, carpet in there knowing that renters, long-term renters or something like that could just tear it. And you just have to rip it out. It's like, I'm going to put nice tile down, hardwood floors, any and all that kind of stuff to make it as nice as possible. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, we, we, heard enough from, from various resources, you know, how real estate's always a great investment. So that was always in the back of our mind, but zero experience, zero, you know, and I think we kept kind of thinking, oh, we have to have this large lump of sun just sitting in the bank and we're not there. So kind of just kicking the can down the road, having really no idea even where to start or, or where to go. And then, um, you know, 
I think he, he heard your podcast, your program, and, and it just light bulbs, you know, that we, we loved a vacation. We stayed in several short-term vacation rentals and loved the experience. And so we could connect with that part. Um, but as far as any experience with any kind of real estate, we had no idea what we were doing. And it's awesome to, to you bring up the point too that you know we're sitting there thinking, man, we always we always thought we had to have this big lump sum of cash, or we weren't quite ready to do it. Because I hear that all the time when I talk to people, and and I always say you're you're probably a lot closer than you actually think you are, right? Yeah. We are talking about buying and owning properties, so you do have to have some capital to invest in it, but you don't have to be these multi-millionaires sitting on piles of cash, right? And right. and so I'm glad you brought that up because so many people I think are actually a lot closer to making rental, like any sort of investment, a real estate investment, a reality than they actually give themselves credit for. So it's, it's nice that you actually had, you know, you hear about it, but you also started to run down the road to really decide, does this work for me? So you get attracted to that short-term rental side, but you also, you know, you take that action to say, yeah, maybe, I, maybe we can actually do this. Yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of eye-opening just once we, we started the program, um, we, we kind of started, you're surrounded by all these different people that you can start asking the questions. And then you started hearing about all these different financing options or different ways that other people did it. And it just like opened up a door of opportunities that we didn't ever think about. And mm -hmm. I remember we had some uh, 401k and stuff. And so we thought we were going to have to go into that. And so we talked to that, that financial advisor and he basically told us, was like, oh, man, you're going to make way more money <laughs> in real estate than you are. Than what I can do for <laughs> yeah. you. So, so we're like, well, we're like, if that's yeah. what he's telling us. Then yeah. Like a nod of approval. Um, but then we basically, yeah, we, we did the, uh, the cash out refinance on our home. And, you know, we were thinking like, OK, we're going to have to pull the money out of a 401k. There's that hit maybe that we might have to take. But, you know, we could we could have done that route. And then whenever we did the, the cash out refinance, this is when the, the markets were going up high. And so it benefited us. So our, our mortgage went up like a couple hundred bucks and we got this cash that we could then go out and invest with. So awesome. it was great. So you, so you were able to just tap, yeah, tap into the equity of the home and then be able to go out. What type of loan did you guys end up getting on the property? So on our, uh, we, we just did a cash out refinance and then we did a just the second home. Second okay. Home. So a 10% down second home vacation mm -hmm. loan. Nice. So you yep. didn't have to have a ton of money into it. And, and no. ultimately really you were able to hundred percent, sort of hundred percent finance the property, right? Because exactly. you've got the HELOC and the, so you really didn't have to come out of pocket or have any saved. You had an asset that you could tap into, which is awesome property underwrote. And so we'll dive into the numbers here in just a minute, but let's back up a little bit and talk about, how did you choose your location? I mean, you like you said, I I love short-term rentals because I love lifestyle assets and I buy properties I want to use personally. That's not always how everybody picks their location, but you kind of alluded to that. So how'd you how'd you go about picking the location? So we ended up in um, northern Georgia. Uh, prior to this, we had never even been to Georgia. <laughs> yeah. So we, we live in Kansas. It's pretty flat here. And we our, our dream was to have a cabin in the mountains. Um, so we initially started looking in Colorado. Um, but we, you know, we were, we just, again, this was when markets were crazy hot, stuff was going and, and um, you know, pending, you know, as soon as you click it an hour later, it's already pending. And so our acquisition price that we were shooting for was around 500,000. And we just weren't finding what we wanted. We wanted a property that could host um, multiple families, maybe multi-generational families um, or like groups of friends traveling together. So a property big enough um, to have gathering spaces. Um, and at that price point, we just weren't finding what we wanted in that market. And so we were kind of opening up to other markets and we were running into some restrictions in certain areas. Um, and so we, we looked at Arkansas a little bit and that's still kind of in the back of our mind, um, but really someone from Bodicey um, had posted about um, North Georgia mountains. And I was like, oh, there's mountains in Georgia. <laughs> like we, we'd never even been to Georgia. Um, and so we, we were just kind of doing some online research, of course, running the numbers with your DNA, the market made sense. Um, and it was a beautiful area. And so we ended up 
booking a trip down um because we were looking at properties online and we're like okay we need to just go and and check yeah. it out for ourselves in person but yeah 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 definitely you know on the on the 12 hour trip down it was very it was just a crazy intense time looking back on it because i remember 12 hours you're looking at all these places that you're like oh this is great and so you you call your real estate agent and they're like yeah that one's already pending <laughs> yeah yeah oh, that one's gone oh yeah <laughs> and so it was just so frustrating um yeah, that that twelve hour. What you guys drove? I'm assuming twelve hours was yes. the, was a drive. Yeah, yeah. That at the start of that drive, there was uh, fifty homes on the market. By the end of the drive, they were uh, forty eight of those fifty were under contract, right? Yeah. 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 So we really kind of had it in our mind that okay, we're probably not going to see anything that's actually available or that we might actually even get, but we just needed to get an idea of what we were looking for, and I think yeah. we did look at maybe three properties initially, and then our realtor um, came across this one. And we have a, she's 12 now, but she was 11 at the time year old daughter. And so of course we're talking as a family, what we would want in this property. And she had her list of um, expectations yeah. <laughs> and dreams. And we walked into this cabin that we ended up getting and it's got kind of a catwalk across to the loft and she was just like this is amazing and so we didn't know it at the time but our realtor uh was videoing her and kind of like I'm gonna go all in with my allowance money this is it this is yeah it. so she was all in and um we think maybe that's what got us got our bid accepted because yeah that's awesome. That is so fun. I love, uh, um, that's so fun because this is, I've always, I mean, I've been investing in real estate for 23 years and I, I always tell people I've never had been involved in an asset class. And it's part of the reasons I love it so much is that my whole family gets involved in it. Mm -hmm. My kids are 11 right now. I've got the twins. They're 11. So right at that same age yeah. and every single property we go in, they have their list, you know, yeah. they have their, you know, they're, they're part of the buying process and they do this, you know, the same things. They're like, Hey, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll work hard. I'll do this. I'll cut the lawns. I'll go find a second job. We just got to get this. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's fun to have those conversations though. And it's fun to have you know, your kids be involved in that process. So I, I love that you brought that up in, in the, in this conversation, because it's one of the funnest parts for me is going and looking at houses like in, and, and having them be a part of it. It's really a fun process. Absolutely. It, it was, uh, it was, it was one thing to go look at all the houses too. And, and I'm glad that we, we did that. Um, I couldn't imagine buying it sight unseen. I know a lot of people do that, but, uh, Whenever we went down there, like the first house was a, like a new construction. It was really, really nice, but it just didn't, it, there was no way to really make it like we wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was a very older cabin with like an uneven floor. And I'm looking at all this stuff like, man, this one's going to take a lot of work. Um, and then the third one was a brand new build. that wasn't even done yet. Same deal. Just didn't quite feel right. And then once we walked into that, that fourth one, it was just like, you could feel yeah. Like, yeah, this is calls, calls to you, right? It's, there's right. a feeling there and yeah. uh, it's been great. Yeah. That's I, it's uh, it's interesting as investors, like, you know, you're 12 hours away from a property, right? Mm -hmm. And you, we, we talked to like not, my closest property to me is five hours away. And so it's, uh, they're, they're across the country all over the place. My closest one is obviously that's a, that's a drivable distance. Most of mine, I have to jump on a plane to get to. And but I never buy property sight unseen still um, to this day, as many properties as I bought. And as, as long as we've been in this game, I set foot on every single property that I purchase. Cause I do agree with you. It's so important to be able to walk in and, and feel it and make sure that it's the right fit. I can't be there all the time for every single property viewing. There's times I'll put them under contract, but when I'm under contract, then I'll go make sure that I walk through it for the inspections and see it first. But it's, it's really I always find it interesting too when people are willing to buy sight unseen because um, you know it's it, it, the logistics of it can yeah it's fine you can say okay yeah I can make it work I'm just looking at the numbers or whatever else but every house has a feeling right mm -hmm. and we're in kind of in the feeling business right we're in the experience business so we have to be able to you know portray these great feelings and these experiences and that's kind of part of it and it's and it's part of the fun right it, as big of a pain as it is to get in the car and drive for twelve hours and do that. Look at the conversation we're having right now too about, you know, 
the checklist that the kids are making. Like we don't forget mm-hmm. that stuff. That's fun, yeah. right? It's not it is is as I mean, I have zero interest in a 12 hour drive. I can tell you that. <laughs> but yeah. but now like looking and saying, okay, what did that come, what came of that and all that stuff. It's it's kind of fun to share that experience and talk about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we we decided on this one. We put it off for how many people were you competing with? I'm assuming at the time you were probably competing at the time. I think we were so it it had like Went on the market Just that day went like on the market. 3, we 3 were, p.m. We we're, were the, I think within a couple of hours, we were the first to put in an offer. And so this was a, a vacation home for an elderly couple. Um, old, yeah, older elderly. Yeah. Um, there, so it wasn't ever on a, any kind of a short-term rental or anything like that, but it was a vacation home for them. But unfortunately, their health declined. They just weren't even able to make use of it. They were ready yeah. to get um but this was a like grandma and grandpa live here six months out of the year and they were not coming back so we didn't know when we put in our offer that it was coming fully furnished but it was like food still in the fridge clothes still in the closet like fully um furnished so we like our whole first week of really after we closed was just cleaning stuff out yeah Um, but we didn't anticipate but but i remember like everything was going so fast at that time you know she our real estate agent was like you know we knew we wanted this house and so she's like we were thinking like we're gonna have to ask over um and she was just like um she goes i think right now she goes she just had this feeling and stuff she's just i think we just go in at asking price Um, but we did that earnest money so we put down 20k earnest money because we were like we want this. We know this is going to work for us. Yeah. And uh, I, I put my eyes on it. So I was like, man, this, the bones of this are really good. Let's, let's just go all in on this. And I don't know if it was the video <laughs> she posted with her kid or just the 20 K or if they were just ready to go, but they took her offer that night. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So you didn't, you didn't have to deal with the big bidding war. You came we in strong was, and that's awesome. Did, that's was, great unheard of at that time yeah that was unheard of and yeah. when you were so you we bought a property almost the same time and we were kind of in the exact same market right we're, yeah. we're not too far from each other we're neighbors and so um did you guys deal with because i did and i don't know if you guys did with a second home loan if you had the interest rate locked in or were your rates going up or moving around while you were while you were in the process we were locked in okay Good. So you didn't have that stress at all. I remember at that time for me, that's when rates really started to spike was around that June timeframe last year in 2020. And so, or 2022, 2020, I'm way, way, way back. Um, Yeah. But that, I remember I started, I started looking at deals and I was using a different type of loan, those DSCR loans, which are more investment type loans. And you can't lock in rates for more than seven days. And so the whole time I was looking, my rates are just creeping up the whole time. And I'm like, man, this is, that, that was a stress during that time for sure. So, so you guys, so you, you went there, you got it under contract by the time you closed, like you, like you were saying, Amy, there was like, it's not like setup time, but we're like, we're like pre setup and try and clean out time. Right. And yeah. decide what you're going to do. How long did you guys budget for that until kind of take me through that process? Well, there, there's a, there's a huge story there that we got to tell. So when we, they told us that we got the house. They wanted to know when we wanted to close. Well, at this point, we were, we started Vodacy in March. We started the program in March. We were putting in offers in May and then we closed in June. So, um, so we were basically right, right there in May. We, we were visiting, we put this offer in. They wanted to know when we were going to get closed. And we're like, we're again, we were going to Vodacy live in June. So we, we were like, we can't. Yeah come on this day because we got Vodacy live but we can come the day after <laughs> so so we went to Vodacy live and then right from Vodacy live we flew back to Kansas to drive to Georgia <laughs> to close on the house and start the, the process and, and we had process. planned wow. for like two weeks of being there to, for setup <laughs> well that whole first week was just cleaning stuff out of the yeah. house like um my mom, bless her heart, was with us, and she kind of like did this makeshift garage sale to just help us try to get rid of stuff. Yeah. So we way underestimated the amount of time we were going to need for setup because we bought it with an unfinished basement. 
And initially, I think we were thinking we were going to just not utilize the basement, but it's a walkout basement, which is where we wanted the fire pit and hot tub. And so we ended up deciding we were going to finish off just the living room space so we could make a kind of a lounge and game room area um, that would also then lead out to kind of the outdoor spaces we wanted to utilize. Um, so we were doing some remodeling and kind of construction during that time. So how did you spend more than the two weeks there or did you end up having to make multiple trips because you had to get back? Yeah, we made multiple trips. We <laughs> drove that 12 hour drive about a hundred times, I think. <laughs> no, let's be realistic to everybody out there. Like okay, you, 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 you figured it up. How many days did we? So we, so from June, just, so we went, we closed in June and went live in September. And out of that time, we spent, two months, two like solid consecutive months there, wow. which means Broken we're spending up. more time there yeah. than home. But again, we're both sole proprietor LLC. So we had to come home and like work our day jobs. And, then back. and so that we had no PTO, no, um, yeah. you know, no one else to delegate to within our businesses. So we were. Yeah. You're gone. The business is gone. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I just want to kind of like point that out there to, to people listening that think like, because I know, I know the struggle out there. You feel like you can't do this stuff. It just feels like impossible, but it's really, you're, you're always going to find a way to, to do this. So, I mean, whenever we were there setting it up, we were extremely tense and, and we were, our first thoughts were like, man, we got to get this thing going because we've never had two mortgages. Yeah. Right. You know, and we're we're sole proprietor. When we're not working there, there's there's no money coming in, and so we were seeing all this money going out. We were like stressed beyond belief on like, man, we got to get this thing up and running as fast as we can. Yeah. Um. So we did. You know, we, we managed it somehow, um, and I think that's the way it always is. Like, you know, yeah. if, somebody always told me once, like, you know, if your your child or something like that was injured you know, you're going to do whatever you can to, to make that. And that's yeah. basically how it always worked out for us. Yeah. You, you'll find a way you, you don't think you're going to be able to do it. You find a way. And I always tell people too, that's the thing that that's why I love doing these, these interviews in these episodes, because you get online and you see all the stuff and I run ads and everything, you know, we talk about the rosy picture, right. And you see it through these rose colored glasses, but the reality is that it's hard. It takes some grit and determination. And there are things that you that you're gonna go through that you're like, man, I would I'd rather not do this today, right? <laughs> and yeah. but then at the end of the at the end of it, you look back and you're like, man, this is pretty awesome. And and yeah. you know, it can be, you know, you're doing things that you never thought you could do. And then the next hard thing comes and you're like, oh, I've got this because I've already done that, right? Yeah. And so I, I like I, I love these types of stories because that acquisition phase is hard. That setup phase is really hard, right? And in in it's that's uh, to me that's the most stressful part of the process, is getting that property set up, ready to go, and making those adjustments until you kind of hit your stride, right? We were talking before we started the episode that there's you start to even make these tweaks, and then you start to you just kind of start to hit your stride a little bit. Yeah, we we uh, along this whole journey of even before we started going into business for ourselves, we, we, we realized the, um, the value in coaching, like finding people that have done this stuff before. Um, and I think that's, you know, kudos to you because you've got a great team of, of vendors and stuff that you work with that have been instrumental in making uh, our business a, a success the way it is. Um, so we, we went with the, uh, Help me out here, the mic. We did mic. Yeah, with Mike uh, Whitfield with the like lock stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we did that. And then, you know, when we went to Vodacy Live, we we're like listening to that stuff. And then we're like, oh my God, we got to do the O2O. Yeah. Uh, and so we talked to them and we told them what we were doing. And they were excellent. They were just like, okay, we're going to do. So I was in one room filming. She was in another room cleaning it and, and organizing it. Yeah, we yeah. knew, we knew. So again, what he was saying is you learn from the experts, you learn from the best. And every every point on the path, we we did our best. You know, anytime we were having stress and headaches was when we veered off the path that was set in front of us. And we went back to it and it was just 
it was so clearly laid out for this path to be successful. So one of the recommendations was this O2O and we knew like we want, we just want right off the bat to get our property set up the correctly to get it, you know, marketed to have beautiful pictures. And so again, because we have this 12 hour drive and we're you know trying to get it all done at once as much as we can, we were finishing setup. So like, and so he was on the phone with them doing the, the photo shoot and I'm in the next room still like making the bed and sweeping up construction dust and like, um, yeah. it was insane, but somehow it all worked out. Those, so. It is insane. And those of you that are listening that aren't familiar, we're, we're talking um, about O2Os um, are photographers that we use, but these are not, these are intense photo shoots and they're actually on the other line and we walk through the property with our phones and they tell us where to hold it and they're taking pictures the whole time and they're taking thousands of photos that they're going to ultimately edit and turn into our listing photos but it's a it's a very intense photo shoot it's not a it's not a quick like one or two hour photo shoot it's it's a, it's exhausting and so yeah it's a, it, it usually usually you have it all set up when you're doing it. You're usually not, Amy's usually not in the other room, like fixing stuff while Dan's in there holding the, the camera. Right. So yeah. it's awesome. well, and I have to give such a huge shout, shout out to them because again, we were doing consultations with them in the height of our stress and, and figuring stuff out. And, and Elizabeth, their designer, yeah. you know, she, she gives these great um, detailed uh, just things to, to notice and, and kind of itemize lists for you that, that are really going to stand out in your photos. So she has yeah. this eye for this. So I'm doing my walkthrough with her to, so she can see our property and get ideas. And there's like boxes on top of boxes that haven't even been opened yet. And she's trying to visualize this space <laughs> and, and it's just like a maze. So somehow she still figured out a good plan for us and, and visualized it and it all came together. But without their help, we never would have been able to get there as we did. So. Yeah. And it turned out awesome. It's uh, like you said, you, you, you're in the middle of it. You're like, I don't know how this is ever going to work. Right. I don't know how it's going to figure out. And so that uh, your photos look amazing. And those of you that are listening, uh, we always post the the listing you guys have. It's called the Blissful Borough um, with the owl theme. And it's a really fun property there in the North Georgia mountains near Blue Ridge. And so um, you can go check out their property, show them some love on Airbnb and, and go give them, go stay, but you go check out what we're talking about here. So I always make a note of that, them, that that's always going to be posted there. So, so tell us about the launch. We got, we got through kind of the chaos and then- well we're, we're crossing our fingers. <laughs> Holy crap. I hope this works. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, probably go, going back just a little bit before that, yeah. one of the things that we, we quickly learned through everything was like how to make your property unique. And we didn't have a, a mountain view like a lot of people have. Or waterfront. Or like waterfront. Yeah. So we were really nervous about this property because we're like, man, I don't know, but we felt good about it. And there was a pond back through the trees that we could see that we could kind of make it look like it's, it's kind of ours, but it's not really ours, but we can look at it. And another, when we were looking around at stuff, we, we found this one place and it was rented out solid and they had a slide on the inside of their cabin. From and, the loft down to the yeah. first floor. And, and we're like, that's it. And our kid was like, yes we're gonna have a slide we need a slide and so that was like one of the first things that we saw this property and like oh we can put a slide off the the deck and honestly right now that is probably the, the number one thing that we hear when we, people yeah we we envisioned we would appeal to families and so and even families with young kids so we have deck uh, a slide off the deck and swings under the deck but we had a bachelorette party that left us a review that they loved the slide. And they the thought it was the funnest thing ever. Yeah, I'm sure they did. They, <laughs> they were, they were just, uh, that's, that's awesome. That, and I'm glad we backed up there because yeah, we do talk about the, okay, we need to create this unique experience. What are we doing to create this unique experience? And we assume we have to be beachfront, ski slope side, waterfront, mountain, long range mountain views, all these things. And you're saying, man, we don't have that. What are we going to do? And there's things you can go do just like what you're talking about and to, to give yourself that edge and give yourself something that's unique and people are going to remember the cabin with the slide, right? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate you you bringing that up because that that's such a critical thing. And and again, sometimes a limitation we place on ourselves thinking, well, I have to be, I have to be beachfront or I have to be waterfront or long range views and you don't have to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was when you look at you know those top properties, you see what they have, and you're just like, man, how can I compete with that? But you just got to think outside the box, and and uh, you know Mike and uh, his he talked about having you know like the hot tub and have it be out in the woods, and I was like. Well, I haven't ever seen that before. So that's what we did as well. So our, our hot tub is like 130 feet out, just surrounded by the trees and it's yeah. just, you're surrounded by the forest. So. And you, you, I'm assuming Dan did some work. I mean, your guys' landscaping looks awesome with the rock work that was brought in that um, that wasn't there. I'm assuming you, you did all that while you were working. Yeah. Right? yeah. Cause it's got a nice trail to the hot tub. It's fun, right? It's, it, it makes it fun. The hot, the, the fire pit area. And so I always, I always say success leaves clues. So those of you are listening, go, go check out, you know, some of the design things that, that they're doing. You know, we work with the best designers I say in the world when it comes to short-term rentals, the best photographers, but like how they brought, like how Mike is able to bring the outside in some of the, some of the photography in there, bringing that outside in is really, really fun. And so um, it, definitely go check the listing out that you're, if you're listening, because success does leave clues and you can go check these things out that we're talking about that make a big difference. It's the details that make the difference. Yeah, um, but going back to your question about like, so we, we, we finally launched this thing and yeah, we're, we're sweating because you're, you're pouring all this money into this. You're, you're seeing you know, the bank account go down and, and like, again, we're not working. So there's money not coming in and we're like, oh my God, we have to do this. And we went live and- Labor Day I'm, weekend was when we went live and, and fall is our, our hottest season, yeah. right? our, our top of top season. So yeah. And yeah, we started getting bookings and um, I mean, it just kind of, mm -hmm. we, we basically had, I think one weekend where we didn't have anybody there. From, from right now today, since when we launched, there's only been like maybe one or two weekends that haven't booked. Um, it's been really conse consecutive, consistent bookings. Um, that very first booking, uh, they canceled, they had to cancel last minute because of COVID. Um, but luckily they rebooked for a different day and we were able to get an, another renter in there, um, last minute. So, but we were like, Oh no, um, right. that, yeah. that, because that, that first one that comes in, you're like, yes, we got one. Right. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> that first, that first book, you always say it's like one of the most exciting times is that first booking on a new property. I love it. I still love it to this day yes. Yeah, on, on my properties. And then, but then you take the wind out of yourselves a little bit and they're like, Oh, we got sick. You're like, Oh, great, yeah. man. I hope, but then it, it comes back up and it, it's, it's amazing all that when all the hard work starts to come together and, and then like you guys have had some amazing reviews. You go read the reviews on your side. I mean, people have loved the property. It just, that that's got to make you feel good about the work that you put into it. Absolutely. And we we have just, you know, the one outdoor camera that faces the front door. Yeah. Um, but you hear, you know, when people come in, just making sure they're arriving safely and all of that. But the, you know, I think other people have mentioned that, but you just hear that, this is amazing. Or, you know, the little kids running up the deck because we have a, a wraparound deck, but they're like, grandpa, come down the slide with me. You right. know? That's so fun. That is it's awesome. Like, yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, it makes it such a. It's that's why I love. I love that it's such a fun asset class. And like you say, you, to be able to share in some of those experiences with people is really really fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so let's talk about so th so that's been. I mean Labor Day. We're we're getting in. We're starting. To, uh, what are we? April mid, end of April, almost May now, <laughs> and uh, seven months. And uh, yeah. we're, we're you know a really good launch, really good momentum. So go, looking back, I always ask people like, you know, there's a lot of lessons learned, right? Why don't you share a couple, couple of those big lessons that you could say, okay, if I could go back at the very beginning and tell myself this, that I would do differently, what would some of those things be? I think, um, so listening to your program, we got super excited. And again, that was a really short, like I kind of joke, I had whiplash. I thought I was just signing up to learn. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then we were like with a weeks later, we're like on this journey and it was, we were going, but again, that, that just speaks to the confidence we had after, after educating ourselves and listening um, to the passion and the wisdom from, from you and the community. Um, but I think, like I said, anytime we would get, we would experience a hurdle. It was because we had veered off. Like we got, we got ahead of ourselves. We get too mm -hmm. excited. Like he'd show me these listings on, Redfin or Zillow, I'm like, Dan, we don't have, you know, that's not the step we're on. And I 
have right. to reel it back in. Um, but just trust the process, follow the steps, and um, and be more organized. So again, I think our stress and overwhelm with the um, with the setup phase, of course, hard work and sacrifices are to be expected. It's temporary. It's totally worth it. Yeah. But we could have avoided some of that if we had been a little more um, prepared and and thought through a little bit more about how we were going to balance everything. Um, yeah, I, I, I would go back to, you know, um, trying to give yourself more time um, to complete it. There's there's a this mad rush of never doing it before to where you think that you've got to get this up and going as fast as you can because that you know, you're bleeding all this money. and anxiety, yeah. kind of. Again, we kind of felt like we were like running with our tails on fire, like. Yeah. Um, but that was that was our ourselves, right? Like we were imposing that stress and anxiety on ourselves. I think. Yeah, but but definitely, I think um, you know we've had several trips down there, and some of the best trips we've ever had is when we we cut off work at a certain time, and then we say, okay, we're going to go into town and have dinner at six yeah. o'clock. So we're going to shut work off. There's other trips we go down and we work from sun up till 11 o'clock at night. Um, and those trips are not as fun to remember. Yeah. Um, so I would tell people to really try not to rush through that. Like you want to have a strong relationship, you know, with your partner in, in this whole thing. And as soon as you start working those late nights and things like that, you can, you can kind of, uh, you know, feel that tension and stuff in there. And then you, and, and that's what we always say too, like the best laid plans are, there's always hiccups in the best laid plans, right? And, mm -hmm. and really taking the time to sit down together and say, okay, what, what are we and how are we going to approach this? This is what, what do we want to do rather than trying to make all those decisions while we're tired and we're stressed and, and everything else, right? It, it, it's a, uh, that setup phase particularly, it's a great, great lesson to learn and, and advice to share for people listening when you go through that is really take a step back and take the time to kind of map it out and mm -hmm. talk about those decisions you're going to make in the throughout the process. Like, what are we throwing away? What are we going to buy back? What are we going to buy new? What are we going to do here? And so that you can have those while you're home sitting around the table and, and everybody's, you know, instead of our backs against the wall, we have to have this decision made by six o'clock tomorrow night because we're leaving. Right. And so, um, yeah, great advice to share to just say that, you know, not only just to, to make it, it you know, I would say slow as smooth, smooth as fast, you know, it's a, the old Na the Navy SEALs tr um, saying, and it's true. You, you got to take the time to slow down a little bit to get through that process. And, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes we, we definitely need stressful. Yeah, we definitely made um, some wrong decisions there. Like she sold a king bed that we ended up later having to buy another king bed, you know? So there's there's things that you do in a hurry thinking that you got to do this as quickly as you can. And if if we would go back and do it again, we would definitely just be like, okay, let's, let's you know, just live in the place for a couple of days. Think about what what is it that we can really keep. But we, we went in it with that wrong mindset. Yeah. Um, is it fair to say to kind of in, enjoy those hard times too? Like you said, yeah. let's give yourself time to say, okay, it's five o'clock. Let's call it a day. We'll pour some wine. We'll sit out on the deck. We'll actually enjoy the hot tub. We'll, we'll go, go down the slide with the kids, right? Do some of those things while you're there. You're there. It's supposed to be a lifestyle asset as well. And, and always remind ourselves of that because, you know, now it is. And now you are able to use it and it is a fun place to go. And it probably, looking back, there were those fun times as well. So allow yourself to have fun during the time where you're, where you feel like I have to just get this done. Like, hey, I'm a hard worker. I'm going to grind this out. I'm going to make sure I get it done. And sometimes we have that, especially, you know, two self-employed drivers, you own your own businesses. You guys are like, okay, we're just going to battle through and get this done instead of giving yourself the grace to just kind of, just to kind of enjoy the process a little bit too. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is, uh, this has been a really fun, I love these conversations. And so I always, I always appreciate, first of all, you guys joining us and sharing your, sharing the journey, sharing the good, the bad, the ugly, as I always say on these, on these uh, episodes and conversations. And so if you had to go back and I always say, if you had to go back and make the decision, you know, I guess I mean, it hasn't even been a year. You guys like made the decision, like ran, <laughs> ran forward fast. And so, but if we had to go back eight or nine months, and say, okay, knowing what you know now, would you do it all again? 
Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. I, I talk a lot in metaphors, but, you know, I think kind of like having kids, you know, like there's, there's a lot of um, hard things that come with, you know, having kids and, and yet we, we often have multiple kids, right? Cause it's like the good, it, it, you know, there's so much beauty and awe and, and gratitude that you experience and whatever hard stuff is in the rear view mirror. And it's like, yeah, like, let's, let's do this again. This was great. Right. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I've yet to hear no, but I'm, I mean, yeah. and I've heard some hard stories. And so it's like you say, the, the good so, so far outweighs the, the stresses and the bad. And so, and we do have a lot of fun with it. Are there plans for the future? Are we going to do another one? We do have some plans for the future. So my, uh, my parents actually uh, live on 120 acres. And so uh, here in Kansas, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to actually do one in Kansas. Love um, we're gonna we're gonna create a little um, kind of like a little romantic getaway for people to leave the city and go down and experience kind of farm life, yeah. so they can see the open the star. starry sky and just just you know. have a quiet. You know, I think because again, <laughs> so this experience taught us that um, really there's a lot of value in vacationing, not just for a destination, but again, just the experience, right? Yeah. So those people that just want a quiet weekend away, whether it's for themselves or with their partner and to just, um, so we're like, well, maybe Kansas is great. <laughs> you know, oh, maybe, yeah. maybe we can hey, do that. I, I, you say far bland, disconnect away from people. Right? I'm signing up like that. That's <laughs> yeah. an experience I, I would, I would sign up for. So yeah. that's awesome. So we're going to, that'll, that'll be the next project on the, um, for the next one. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome, guys. Well, listen, I sure appreciate you joining us and uh, we'll wrap up for today. Those of you that are joining us listening, we always appreciate you joining us. I know how valuable your time is and love that you spend it with us. I always leave you with one challenge at the end of every episode, and that is to go pick one thing that you can do today to go start building that life that you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicy.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.